All right, hey guys, so as a continuation of last video, we're going back to Petco. And the sun just ruined my good shot. Anyway, yeah, I'm gonna go back to Petco, but this time we're not getting any freshwater fish, we're getting something saltwater. I mean, you read the title, you know what we're doing. We're getting a starfish. So right here is my saltwater reef tank, and as you can see, I've been having this issue with this brown stuff all over the substrate. Now the coral and everything are doing absolutely amazing, but I just get tons of this brown algae all over the substrate. So I'm hoping that the sand sifting starfish will be able to go ahead and just help stir that up and keep it nice and clean for me. Now sometimes starfish starve in aquariums, however this tank has been set up for about 8 months so it is very established. And we have about a one and a half to 2 inch sand bed right about here that is full of little organisms and stuff the starfish can eat. My coral and fish are doing really really well. So I think the starfish should do good as well. I don't think we're going to have any issues with it. So let's go ahead and head on to Petco and go ahead and pick up a sand sifting starfish. All right, we're back at Petco. I'm going to go in there and check stuff out and then I'll film a little bit on my phone if I can because they don't really like it when I bring this camera in. So I'll be back if we get anything and you can see little updates in the store. Okay, so I took my phone into Petco to show you some stuff. They had a long spine urchin, some just normal uh, starfish, a nice elfin tang, uh, an angelfish right here with some snails, nothing too crazy. Some anemones, but not that much, and then just normal damsels and stuff. Uh, there's another anemone and some clownfish. And then down here, another anemone and a yellow tang. More clownfish, firefish, damsels, just normal saltwater stuff. And then there was some more clownfish and some starfish as well. All right, so we're back from Petco, and as you can see, they had a nice selection of some saltwater fish, some urchins, stuff like that. And of course, we got our starfish. Now, the bag was leaking a bit, so I went ahead and put a towel down. If you buy fish as much as me, you know the importance of always carrying a towel in the car. But he's doing good. He's moving around the bag quite a bit, as you can see. So I'm going to go ahead and get this guy home and just start his acclimation process. So we're back home, and I'm going to go ahead and begin acclimating him. So I just have him floating right now. But I'm going to go ahead and transfer him to like a little floating container that's going to float in the tank. And then every five minutes for an hour, I'm going to put a quarter cup of tank water into his water you know, to get him all acclimated. But he's moving quite nicely, as you can see. He's out there crawling around, moving around the bag, finding stuff to eat in the bag that's not there. But we'll get him out shortly in about an hour. Now, starfish are very sensitive to water parameters, so that's why we're going to go ahead and do acclimation very, very slow, much like you would an anemone. In an anemone. So I'm going to go ahead and move this light over and then stick this in right here. So I emptied out some of the water in this bag, and now I'm just going to go ahead and kind of dump some of this water in here. Wow, the focus is really thriving. Now by doing this, like I said, the starfish is not exposed to air, which is bad for them. So I'm just going to go ahead and just slide this guy right out. So he's choosing to not come out of the bag right away, but as you can see, if I hold this still from the flow, he's actually crawling right out of the bag once I just left it in there a little bit. So now that he's safely out of the bag and walking around, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this. And now we can go ahead and start our five minute timer. One eternity later. All right, so we're 35 minutes into acclimation. I went ahead and put a piece of pellet food in there just to see if it would eat it because it's been super active, but of course that piece of pellet food will not sink yet. So the food's just kind of floating around, but the starfish is doing great. We're about 35 minutes into acclimation. We'll be back in 25 more minutes. Now, I don't want to get any of this water in this tank, but I also don't want the starfish to get out of the water, which the starfish was like climbing on the sides of the like, container and like was sticking its little feet out of the water, so I don't know. But I'm going to go ahead and get a little water in this, and I'm actually just going to try to get the starfish to go in this cup and then dump some of the water out and then put the cup in the tank. You'll see. Okay, so I got him in this Starbucks cup right here. I'm gonna go ahead and just keep it as full with as much water as I can to keep him, you know, alive. And then we're just gonna do the transfer really nice and fast. So there he goes, he's out of the cup. And immediately he's just gonna go ahead and bury himself in the sand. Of course, the fish are gonna try to be camera hogs, but he's just gonna go ahead and bury himself in the sand. You can see him pushing the sand out of the way as he goes down into it. I know it's not contrasting very well because he is white and it's on black sand, so it's a little difficult to see, but I mean, he's gonna bury himself anyway. So that's it for the starfish for now. Okay, so it's a few days later. The starfish is still doing great. He's out moving around all along the glass and he's doing really, really good. But I thought we'd go ahead and go to Walmart now. Now, Walmart in general, I believe, is gonna stop selling their live fish. Which is weird because my Walmart about six months ago got brand new fish tank systems and now they're just going to get rid of them, but okay. So all the fish are on Clarence Price right now, so I thought we'd go over there, check if they had any left, and just check how the fish are doing, if there even are any. Okay, so as you can see, all the fish were 50% off and it basically just says they're expanding into new pet supplies. 
But there was literally no fish left. They had nothing. No glowfish, no cichlids, no goldfish. Absolutely There was like nothing. three fish in there, but you'll see them later. But just a quick scan of the tanks. All they had was plants and some old decor. Then at the very top tank, they had this pleco, which looked like he had ick. That's why I didn't get him. And then two little catfish that were struggling. So Walmart literally had nothing. It was a bust. I'm going to go ahead now, though, and put those three platies from a few videos ago, or maybe it was from last video into the 110 gallon pond. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab the three platies that are in here and put them into that little cup I just showed you. Go ahead and net them out real quick and get them into their pond. So here they are, as you can see, they look healthy, they look good. They're just chilling out. Let's go ahead and get them into the pond. Say hi to the ducks real quick. Hi, peanut, hi, butter. And here is their pond. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, scoop out all the duck feathers that are in here for some reason. Not really sure why they're there, but they're there. And then I'm also gonna go ahead and maybe add a little bit more water. They'll just float like that. This will go ahead and temp acclimate. I'm gonna go ahead and clean up this pond just a little bit. All right, these guys have been acclimating for a little bit. Go ahead and just, I guess, dump them in. I mean, water is same temp and just let them be free in their new nice green water pond. Now all we have to do is go ahead and just put this on right here. Just like that, the 110 gallon fish tub is done. Three platies, hopefully we'll make a lot of baby platies and they're just gonna sit out here, get fed a lot of food and just do their thing. So that's it for this pond. Pretty simple, pretty easy setup. Now I'm gonna go ahead and feed the koi fish and the ducks. So for the koi fish, we'll just have some lettuce for them right now. The lettuce is pretty good for them and as you can see, they like it a lot actually. Now while we're here, we can do some updates real quick. The pond lilies are doing great and so are all the fish. But the main issue we're having here is algae. Tons of string algae everywhere. I really don't like it. It does not look very good at all. I'm looking into remedies for that. But the fish in the pond lily are doing completely fine. As you can see, the fish are thriving. Now, of course, the ducks are gonna run away from me right now, but let me go ahead and open this up. I'll just give them this whole brick of food right now. Of course, as soon as they see the food, they're gonna come running for it. And they will go ahead and start munching on that as soon as it thaws out a little bit. And then while we're feeding the rest of the animals, I'm going to go ahead and get the turtle some food. Go ahead and grab this off. Now the lettuce just simply goes like this in this clip. Nothing crazy. And then the clip just goes right in here. And he will go ahead and eat that throughout the day. So right now it is Tuesday evening, right? And that is the day where every Tuesday I do a water change on my reef tank behind me. So I thought I would go ahead and include kind of how I do it and everything I do in this video. So to start off a water change, here are the materials we're going to need. So this is a 55 gallon aquarium with two 20 gallon sumps. Now these sumps do help a lot with cleaning the aquarium, but they don't do all the work. So every single week I change 10 gallons of water out of this tank for 10 gallons of new fresh salt water. So we have to actually make the salt water now. We need a refractometer to go ahead and check how salty the water is. We need heaters and pumps to mix the salt water around and heat it up to the right temperature. You obviously need salt. Uh, something to mix the water in and then RODI water. So basically everything's a lot less difficult than you'd actually think. Basically we just dump the water in here. Now all we have to do is add the salt. I add five cups of salt in here because this is 10 gallons of water. Now all we have to do is add a heater right here to go ahead and warm this water up to the same temperature as the tank and a circulation pump to just mix the salt together. Okay, so the water behind us right here is all cleared up and ready to go. We checked the salinity with a refractometer and it is perfect, spot on with the tank's parameters. Now all we have to do is take water out of this tank and then fill it back up with clean, fresh water. So now first things first, before we can do anything, we have to turn off all the filtration. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into my app on my phone, turn off the wave pump. As you can see, the waves will start to die down at the top surface. And then I'm gonna go ahead and unplug the return pump and the protein skimmer. Now water is gonna be drained out of the display tank and just fill up the sump. It really does nothing. Go ahead and take the screen top off real quick. So now all I have to do is stick this siphon in the water right here and then put the other end of it in the bucket and start the siphon. So now the 10 gallons of water are removed from the tank and the sand's been vacuumed. I just take this pump right here, drop it into the clean water, take this end, put it into the tank, just like that to hold it in place, and then all we have to do is go ahead and plug the pump in. There's the anemone right back there, and there's the starfish as well, just really doing great. The last thing we have to do is just plug the pumps back in, the protein skimmer back in, the return pump back in, and then also go ahead and turn the uh, circulation pump back on. 
So right there that just turned on was the return pump. And then now we'll go ahead and turn on the wave pump. Like so, as you can see, the waves are going to go ahead and pick back up. So now we have our return pump back on and our circulation pump back on. Now all we have to do is go ahead and give the tank a little bit of time to clear up and we'll check back in. Anyway, guys, that is it for this video. The saltwater tank is looking nice and clean. Thank you guys so much for watching. Goodbye. Thank you.